It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives. Changing lives. Changing lives for the better. For the better. Changing lives. And hi again, everyone. Jim Knox along with Grace Sells. Welcome back to another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring some of the best doctors in the entire Dallas Fort Worth area that help change people's lives. Speaking of helping change people's lives, Grace, we'll start with our first best doctor. That's right, Jim. Up first on our show today is cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Michael Thornton. I had augmentation done that went wrong. It was really, really bad. And I was a fitness instructor and I've been teaching for a really long time. And I stopped because I was so cognizant of the humongous size that I had become, which is fine for those who go to get it. That's fine, but if it's not me, it's really messing with my psyche. Janet came to see me uh, because she needed some uh, revisional cosmetic surgery. She had um, a particular breast deformity where it's called capsular contraction, which is basically the breasts are turning hard around the breast implants and uh, her breast implants were basically stuck all the way up, way up inside her chest and it, she had a lot of cleavage and it looked very unnatural. And I said, I can't, I can't continue this, Dr. I really didn't want to go under the knife again, but I think I have to because I can't continue to live like this. And his suggestion was, Janet, let's get rid of everything. Let's get you healed. Let your skin retract. And then after a few months of that, let's go back in and do what you originally wanted done. I had to do a couple of staged procedures for her because it's hard to do everything at once and it's safer that way. If you try to rush surgery, especially revisional surgery, you can have problems. And what I had to do is I had to first take out her implants. I had to do an explantation, okay? So that was the first stage. And do a mastopexy. So basically we took her breast and uh, took them back to normal. After a series of several months later when she healed up, I came back and I re-implanted some new implants, put them into a different place, and I did a tummy tuck on her and some liposuction. So it really made her look really good and she is really happy today. It's, it's, a, it's a huge change and a huge difference. You can just tell that her, her overall personality has improved significantly. It's been incredible since then. My life completely changed. I'm happy. I'm actually more confident, I think, than I've ever been because I am the way I am. I'm out and I'm actually thinking about going back into fitness. Dr. Thornton's changed my life significantly and every time I see him, I tell him that. You're like my savior. You changed me. I am this happy 46-year-old woman that I owe him a lot. BestDocsNetwork.com helps you find the right doctor for your medical needs. Watch videos on each doctor and decide for yourself who fits you best. On the Best Docs Network homepage, you can see the latest videos, search for a doctor, find educational content, and watch the latest TV episodes from each BDN market. Dehydration affects digestion, energy level, and fitness. An easy way to make sure you are drinking enough water is to make sure your urine is the color of pale lemonade. I've done dance a majority of my life, ever since I was about two and a half when I first enrolled in tumbling. And over the years with mirrors and makeup and performing, I kind of realized something's wrong. I noticed my nose was not always the best it could look. Well, rhinoplasty essentially means reshaping the nose. When you look at the nose, it's in the middle of the face. Um, and we don't really want to draw attention to the nose, whether it's positive or negative. The whole point is you want people to look at your eyes, you want them to look at your smile, your mouth, your overall facial appearance, and the nose you don't want to be a distraction. In terms of aesthetics, you really want to make the nose fit your face. Dr. Ducek is very open, he's extremely funny, he's very relatable, he gets very involved with his patients, 
He really tries to figure out how and what needs to be done to get the achieved goal. In terms of when to have a rhinoplasty, appropriate age is when patients are mature enough. You have to look at the facial features and facial growth. Sometimes you can do corrective nasal surgery on patients as young as 13 and 14 if their facial features are, are fairly well developed. Sometimes they're not ready till they're 17 or 18 or 19, and so you really have to individualize it. It's important to have a nose that is appropriate for your facial dimensions. You don't want a nose that's too small and somebody with wider cheeks. You don't want a nose that's too large or too prominent. And so it really is a matter of balancing it with the rest of your face. He explained to me that, you know, the balancing my face was off. He not only recommended a full rhinoplasty job for alignment on my nose, but he also recommended a four millimeter um, implant to my chin and my jaw so that it could help balance out my face. Now, to this day, about four or five years later, it has definitely made an improvement. I'm definitely more confident. And now, with my greater confidence, I've actually been able to have some modeling opportunities and gotten to actually show off my new presence and appearance. To request an appointment with any of the amazing physicians you see on our show today, head to our website, it's bestdocsnetwork.com, go to the doctor's profile page and click on the request an appointment tab. You can even request an appointment with our next doctor, it's smile specialist and cosmetic dentist, Dr. Guy Lewis. I probably wouldn't have done it if my wife had not persisted. Uh, and said it meant something to her. The discussions about my, my health and my heart and how the teeth uh, over time could affect it and, uh, that I finally gave in and uh, did it for my wife. Ed comes in and he wants to get all this work done and so we basically did a full mouth on him. And his teeth were broken down. He had had some dental work a long time ago but it had basically gotten re-decayed and some problems there. So he needed to have a lot of this done. The thought of uh, being able to come in and, and get it done, uh, uh, I'll say one sitting, although it's pretty long sitting, um, was probably the, uh, the appeal to, uh, to do, doing it that way. So we did the smile lift on Ed, where we opened his bite some and to get them in a better position, increase the color, made them whiter, brighter, and got them more in alignment to where they weren't hitting all different places. And the results are amazing. Not like any dentist experience I've ever had. And, and I had thoughts when I was young about being a dentist and uh, had a couple good family friends that were dentists. Uh, and they, the experience was nothing like any dentist I had been to. He's busy, but he was able to come in and we could do this in a couple of visits and get the major things done. These are normal results for us, but you look at it and it's pretty dramatic. But that's what I get to see every day. That's what I love about my work. Is you get health, get things cleaned up and looking good, but also make it look awesome. Again, I don't smile too often, but it's amazing how many people stop me whether it be uh, a TSA agent at the airport or uh, a waitress or someone I'm doing business with that says, uh, uh, boy, how beautiful your smile is. And um, as, a, as a man, I'm reluctant to say, oh, well, yeah, I've had cosmetic dentistry. Uh, so I just kind of say thank you and I say I've been blessed, and I have. Uh, when I look in the mirror and smile, yeah, it makes me feel good now. To find a doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com, you can search by your location and the doctor's specialty. From there, you can search through the doctors listed. You can even search by your current location to find the doctor closest to you. And we welcome you inside the Best Talks Network studio. We are happy to be joined by Dr. Doug Wan. And when it comes to spine and neck surgery, this is your go-to doctor. He is also the director and founder of Spine Care. Dr. Wan, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank All you for right. having me. Let's start it off with your philosophy when it comes to your approach to medicine. What would that be? So we practice medicine based on, it's, it's, our approach is very patient-centric. 
providing the, the best care for the patient. And when it comes to spine care, spine problems are a very complex issue. And so our approach is to approach it with a very comprehensive approach. So in our center, we have from the, the least invasive way to the most complex way of treating spine conditions. And we have uh, uh, providers such as chiropractors, physical therapists, physical medicine rehab doctors, interventional pain specialists, and minimally invasive spine surgeons. And we approach it through the multidisciplinary approach and find the best way to treat the patients so that they get the, the most amount of pain relief. All right, doctor, what was your goal in creating spine care? What did you have in mind? When we created a spine care, our goal is to provide the best kind of spine care to the patients. There are many patients with a very complex spine problems. However, not everyone may need spine surgery. So we uh, approach the spine through a multidisciplinary approach and we find the best way to treat the patients with significant back pain. That's why we have the, from the chiropractor to physical therapist, physical medicine rehab doctors, interventional pain specialists, and minimally invasive spine surgeon. We find the right diagnosis and treat the patient the right way and the least invasive way possible so that they can get their life back as soon as possible. Also at the spine care, we have high level imaging so that uh, patients do not have to travel elsewhere to get their imaging studies done. Also, we have our own procedure centers on campus, so therefore they can not only get the, the evaluation, but also pain procedures done, as well as spine surgery. To see the rest of this interview, as well as other outstanding videos, head to BestDocsNetwork.com. Over 90% of diseases are caused or complicated by stress. Some ways to help deal with the stress in your life are exercising, listening to music, writing in a journal, or going for a walk. Diabetes is a systemic disease that affects multiple organ systems and in particular it affects the feet. Uh, the main complication that occurs with diabetes is something called neuropathy which is where the patient loses the sensation in their feet. Once that occurs they are at risk for pressure calluses, ulcerations, infection and possible amputation. At the end of November I developed a a uh, blister on the bottom of my foot that then turned into a diabetic ulcer which then caused an infection in my bone, primarily my big toe, and had to have my big toe extracted. A lot of people don't realize that there are over 75,000 diabetic foot amputations a year. Of those diabetic patients that have amputations, 68% have a five-year mortality rate. Pauline came in and because the diabetes was so out of control, uh, her ability to heal these pressure ulcers on her feet uh, were severely limited and that's one of the main problems with being diabetic is your ability to heal common ulcers or pressure areas. They didn't realize how bad it was and it can just come on you and if you don't get it taken care of, then it will lead to not just toes, but your feet and your ankles and your legs. Another thing that diabetics are prone to is peripheral arterial disease. This is poor circulation in the extremities. We have uh, modalities here in the office that we can help assess for these risk factors. For example, we have a peripheral arterial test that puts blood pressure cuffs around your arms and legs and what it does is assess the amount of blood flow that's getting to your extremities. By this, we can help determine whether there's further intervention that's needed. So if you do end up having a, a sore on your foot, we can address it and it will heal properly. We are now seeing Pauline much more frequently for regular checkups and providing special shoes and inserts as well to prevent further pressure areas from developing. I'm feeling stronger and finally I'm getting to the point where it really is important to take care of it. For more information and to watch hundreds of videos on the amazing doctors you see on our show today, head to our website. It's bestdocsnetwork.com. That is the place to go and right now, Grace, the place to go is our next best doctor. It is bariatric surgeon Scott Stowers from My Bariatric Solutions. At the age of 25, about 15 years ago, 
I was diagnosed with um, high blood pressure. And with that high blood pressure came three medications. I had a family history of heart disease and had seen a cardiologist since I was 10. I uh, had, you know, just a lot of weight gain with having two children. My grandmother uh, had both legs amputated with diabetes. Then my father has diabetes and, you know, just the family history. Yeah, Lisa uh, is an example of one of our patients that came to see me for the typical problems of inability to lose a significant amount of weight that would affect her health. Several different doctors for 15, 20 years had been saying that, you know, if you could lose 70 pounds and keep it off, you would get rid of the high blood pressure. There is a huge possibility that you will not be diabetic, that even your heart condition would be um, just almost completely resolved, um, and you could even get off of all of the medications. So I chose the gastric sleeve procedure, which for me was just the best choice. For a sleeve patient, they typically need to be at least 70 pounds overweight. Sleeve is a relatively new procedure that we do where we take out about 80% of the stomach. The whole concept of the surgery is just restrictive in nature where they essentially are on a low calorie diet for the rest of their life, but they're not hungry all the time. I came in and I met with the actual surgeon. I actually sat down with Dr. Stowers and he was amazing. Somebody who just totally makes you feel comfortable. Uh, he answered every question. He was very honest with me and reassuring. It was just beyond belief uh, that he was able to make me feel so comfortable. At one week post-op, I was literally off of all of my medications it had already made that big of a difference. Within a year, she lost about 80 pounds. I've reached my goal weight. Um, it's been great going from a size 18, 20 and an extra large shirt to a size 8, 10 and a medium shirt. I never thought I'd see that again, so it's been really exciting. Hi, I'm Dr. Yadra Duchik. Did you know that pairing vitamin C serum before you apply sunscreen can help protect your skin against the damaging effects of the sun? To learn more, watch my videos on BestDocsNetwork.com. Each doctor on the Best Docs Network website has their own profile page where you can watch videos on the doctor, read info on their background and training, find their office locations and directions, as well as ask the doctor a question and request an appointment. A lot of my patients worry about dementia. They think they're getting Alzheimer's disease. The main thing that worries people is they go into a room thinking they're there for something and can't remember what they're there for. That really isn't dementia. That's just being overwhelmed with life, having too much on your mind, and just generally the human condition. Dementia and Alzheimer's disease is characterized by people who sort of forget where they're going, for example. They, they have to call home and find out how to get home. They've gotten lost driving. Uh, or they forget names of people, or they forget uh, places that they're supposed to be. Pretty obvious things. Also, dementia is a progressive thing. We don't see dementia happen just a little bit here and then a little bit there and stay the same month to month and year to year. It tends to be getting worse and worse and worse. For example, you and your family and your friends will notice that you're worse now than you were six years ago or six months ago. Even. So it's important to not worry about the small changes. It's those progressive changes where you lose your memory for things that you should remember. For additional medical minutes from Dr. Honecker, log on to bestdocsnetwork.com and click on the Medical Minute tab on the home page. Carrie is a young lady who complained of breast hypoplasia, which means small breasts. Her breasts were small and she wanted larger breasts. She also had breasts that were not what she thought was normal because she had a tubular breast deformity. What that means is that the nipple was very, very prominent and pointy as opposed to a more natural appearance. So she wanted uh, breast augmentation, larger breasts. She was an A cup and she wanted more of a CD cup. And she also wanted to correct her tubular breast deformity or the prominent nipples that she had. It was just something I really wanted. I wasn't comfortable with my body at all. I couldn't wear bikinis at all. I couldn't talk in public. So I just thought if I get the surgery, that it would help me out. 
When I first met Dr. Asus, I thought he was very friendly and was always smiling and that would make me smile and feel more comfortable. And he explained everything perfect to me. Tubular breast deformity is quite common. Many women have a tubular breast deformity where the nipple doesn't sort of lie flat on the breast and is very prominent. In very severe cases, the breast looks like a tube with a pointy nipple on the end. So the object is to make it rounder, to give them cleavage so they don't have these pointy breasts. In Carrie's case, what we did is a correction of her tubular breast deformity, and we also gave her increased volume. At first, I was an A cup, and now I'm a 36D, and I just love that. I was surprised I couldn't stop staring at myself in the mirror, looking at the new me, and I would just stay in my room and just keep looking at myself, and I would turn sideways and all that. <laughs> I love going shopping now, I really do, because <laughs> you can wear whatever you want without worrying about if the cut's too low, how you're going to look in it. I love wearing different stuff now, the dresses, the bikinis, everything, I, I just love it. Do you have missing teeth, need crowns, veneers, partials, dentures, or a full mouth reconstruction? Prostodontist Dr. David McFadden will give you back the youthful appearance and confidence you deserve. Backed by credibility and credentials, Dr. McFadden is cosmetically changing his patients' lives one smile at a time. Call today or log on to DignityDental.com. Dr. David McFadden, your go-to dentist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Don't forget, for more information about any of our outstanding doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com. That's bestdocsnetwork.com. Right now, it's time to head to our next best doctor. It is Dr. Nyla Malik, helping patients feel their best. The two major groups of acne population that we see in our practice are um, teens, which, um, which is I would say about 60-70% of our acne patients are in their teens, and then about 30% of our acne patients are adult onset acne. These are people in their late 20s or 30s or even 40s. My dream was to always become a model and, you know, just dealing with acne, it's just like it affects me mentally and it brought me my insecurity problems. And when I first met her at an event, you know, she told me, you know, it's okay, you're going to feel beautiful one day, whatever you feel right now, it's, it's not going to last for a long time. Alexa is in the group of um, teen acne patients. So she's had acne since her early teen years and, um, and it's continued in her early 20s now. She has been treated in the past with um, multiple different types of um, skin treatments and, and medications as well. Typically what happens with her and most teens is that um, antibiotics or any topical um, acne product it seems to work for a few weeks or a few months and it stops working. And, and that's the nature of acne, unfortunately. That's the nature of this condition. After patient evaluation and try figuring out what type of acne they have, the treatment is tailored to address that particular patient's needs. In her case, we may use a combination of in-office procedures, antibiotics for a short period of time, and an anti-testosterone medication to reduce her testosterone sensitivity, and that's what has led to such great results um, with acne control in Alexa. You know, I felt like an ugly duckling, like people were gonna judge me and see me like, you know, not as pretty, because nowadays it's all about image. You know, you wanna feel beautiful. In my patients themselves, um, I see their personality change when their skin starts to improve. I mean, I've seen patients who are so shy that they, are, um, they avoid groups and crowds and, and they're antisocial almost, and their personality completely blooms when you improve their skin and appearance. Today now, I feel a lot more confident, and she's like done a wonderful job. I see a change, a big change now, especially from my before and after pictures. I feel like I can talk to anyone face to face. I feel like accepted. I feel like a swan. Rachel has a question for Dr. Michael L. Thornton. How soon after breast augmentation or cosmetic surgery can I get in the water? Basically, I tell all my patients that about two or three weeks before you can get into the lake, the ocean, swimming pool, anything that's a, a body of water versus just a clean shower. 
um, because we want to make sure that the scars are well healed, there's no evidence of infections, and there's no small openings allowing any of the uh, bacteria to get inside. But typically all of my patients can take a shower in their own house within 24 hours. They can get their scars wet uh, by specifically I, I put uh, brown paper tape and I put Dermabond over all those areas and keep them watertight. Uh, so that it, they're, they're fine taking a shower, but to get into a swimming pool or a hot tub or lake or something like that, I would rather them wait about two or three weeks. BestDocsNetwork.com also has a video library of all the doctor's videos that you can break down by doctor, topic, and specialty. This is a great way to find videos quickly and watch all the videos associated with your needs. Imagine designing your own perfect face and body. Turn to Dr. Robert Wilcox who specializes in face and body procedures as well as many non-surgical alternatives. Dr. Wilcox understands that your life and appearance matter most. With an extensive educational background and exceptional eye for detail, you can now look as young as you feel. Call for a complimentary consultation and regain your confidence today. My specialty of prosthodontics really is the plastic surgery of dentistry. And in order to have a successful outcome, we want our patients to look beautiful and refreshed like the plastic surgeons do, but we don't want anyone to focus on why that is. And my specialty of prosthodontics exists because we make people's smiles as perfect as possible. We make people's smiles perfect with veneers, crowns, or implants. Each patient has a tailor-made treatment plan uh, that we execute to give them the smile they've always wanted. It's very profound the effect that teeth have on a person's facial structures. Part of the aging process is that people lose teeth or they lose bone and that changes their facial shape and it makes them age prematurely. So healthy, beautiful teeth support the face and that is a part of what we try to do. For our patients who are missing teeth, we certainly want to give them back a beautiful smile, but part of the process is giving back the fullness and the youthful appearance from having the soft tissues restored as well as the teeth. During our diagnostic phase, we try to identify the problems with each patient's smile. Some people's teeth are too long, some are too short, some are too narrow, some are too wide. So there's a variety of ways that we can fix virtually every smile. And part of the specialty of prosthodontics is to know the modalities that need to be employed to fix each patient's smile and make it a custom, beautiful smile. My approach to these treatments is that I want to partner with my patients to create a breathtaking, functional smile. And the end result is life-changing for them, but what I love is it's life-changing for me too. To see their reaction and to participate in that, it's life-changing for me as well. I think most of our patients who go through a smile transformation have greatly improved self-esteem and that's one of the most satisfying parts. That'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring some of the best doctors in the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area that help change people's lives. And for more information about any of these outstanding doctors, head to the website bestdocsnetwork.com. And if you have a question, a comment, or a life-changing story, we would love to hear from you. Just send us an email at info at So long, everyone. We will see you next week.